Good morning. Hi, this is Jan from New York City. My channel name is Jan from New York City Saves Money. I love to help people actually keep their money. How's everybody doing on this beautiful morning? Hope that this audio video finds everybody doing well. You know, there is a big difference between having no choice in the matter, but to live on less, as opposed to I choose to live on on less. Now, there are situations, unfortunately, in life where circumstances are such that sometimes people have no choice but to live on less until they straighten out their circumstances, by which usually the cure, of course, would be to increase income. That's really the only cure. Of course, the option to severely, severely cut back, but who wants to live the deprived lifestyle? If there is anything that I personally would like to convey as part of my channel's mission is to, to convey the big difference between a chosen frugal lifestyle as opposed to all oh my word I have no choice and things are horribly this and that and you know you have to live in a, such a way until things improve now I choose to cut back on things because literally I choose to because I want to, I think many times in our society, I think that we oftentimes are very wasteful. Uh, sometimes we make mindless decisions. Sometimes uh, we have so much stuff. Sometimes many of us, we do not even realize how much stuff we actually have until we go through our things. I'll give an example. Many times people put off the decluttering process. Not that they don't know that at the end of all the effort comes out a great thing, a great result. We know that. That's a given. But sometimes we don't like confronting going through the decluttering process. Why? Because many times it takes a lot of work. But why does it take a lot of work? Because at the end of the day, many of us simply have to much stuff, too much stuff to deal with. And, and that, believe you me, that is an entirely different show of which one day I will totally address that. But for now, I want to talk about my choices. Okay. For example, sometimes when we wake up and we eat breakfast, I'll give you an example. Sometimes most people have one to two slices of toast per breakfast. Many times people are happy with just the one most people, they're totally satisfied with the two, and that's the end of that. But did you ever have a leisurely Sunday where all of a sudden you had the two pieces of toast, then all of a sudden you go grab a Danish like shortly after or some other type of pastry or even maybe toast number three, and then you eat it, and then you're like, Ugh, why did I do that? I think many times we do these extra things out of habit. For example, we could go to the grocery store. Now, who's to say that many of us do not like frozen desserts like ice creams, true ice cream, the real thing, but there are things called frozen dessert. They are a separate category. Again, another show. <laughs> just saying, just saying. But all right, to get, in my opinion, this is my opinion. This whole show is my opinion. Remember that. But do I have to get two? of those ice creams, unless there's a really, 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 really good deal on the price. It's a consideration. But to me, to get the two ice cream, no, because people don't really need ice cream. People want ice cream. This is just an example. I think we are so trained to have more, more, more of all of this and all of that, that it actually can ruin our budget. And it actually can ruin our spending plan in such a way that we're allocating funds where it does not have to go. When meantime, you might be denying yourself things that are of better use. Just saying, just saying. So here's a little project for today. Just go over, just in the back of your mind's eye. Ask yourself, in the last 7 to 14 days, did you overtly purchase something that Really looking back, you like you really thought you quote end of quote needed to have multiple of all those extra extra things. Look on your look in your refrigerator, look in your freezer, it hasn't been touched yet. Okay. And you might even look at it and go, oh, why did I buy so many of those things? <laughs> Has that happened to anyone ever? Hang on a second, I want to grab a sip. Mm-mm. 
By the way, did you pay over two dollars today for a cup of coffee? If you did, you paid too much. Just saying, just saying, just my friendly little reminder. And by the way, just curious about something. How many here have ever tried the dollar a day system? The dollar a day saving system. What I mean by that is you don't have to take necessarily a physical dollar in your hand, but try to find ways throughout the month that you are saving, for example, or keeping like a, you know, 50 cent off coupon or a BOGO that you split with your friend, like doing things. That's a fun assignment too. find out how many ways that you can actually keep your money. See, everything's particularly pertinent to a person's specific lifestyle. For example, I'm not going to lie to you. I was never, ever, ever a coupon clipper. If I told you I was a coupon clipper, I'd be a liar. But that's not to say, first of all, where I am, I'm not going to lie, that, that store was like, ooh, they like looked at you like, oh, we have to deal with that. So, you know, when you get that look kind of thing, this was, I'm talking about 10 years, 10 years ago when a specific store was in existence in the area. And they would like make like this face like of doing the extra work. I says, oh, it's just, ah, oh. it was very humiliating. So it turned me off the once or twice I did try to do it. Then there was a show that went on TV, you know, with Extremity about doing that, which sort of ruined it with coupon clipping for some people and so on and so forth. But I am curious to know, are there really people out there? And I I really want to know this, that you take advantage. Now, those uh, codes, like those codes that you can enter, that I have done on the online shopping, that I have taken advantage of. Do you ever enter coupon codes where you do some online shopping? There are so many things that two things we could really concentrate on this week. Just make a point, for example, see this week, I'm going to concentrate on not overtly buying something just because it sounds so great, because what you might be doing is tying up your money for something else that maybe is more of a need instead of, for example, the two or three extra quarts of ice cream. And by the way, has anybody notice? <laughs> is it my imagination or is the size of the packaging of certain items shrinking, shrinking, shrinking? Oh, my word. Uh, I don't even want to get into it. It's just like sad. It's like a sad day. But that's their way of keeping the product going at more of an affordable price, but that, that again, that's another show. But let's keep down to two little things, projects this week. One, figure out some actual realistic ways that you could meet, let's just say this week, $7 to put away on the side and to forget about, because that's the dollar a day, right? How can you save $7 this week? It might just be by omitting making a purchase of one thing, one thing alone that's really not a need, but more like I just want to have extra uh, just in case. Sometimes just in case is a great thing. And sometimes just in case turns out to be something that might just sit in a freezer, get freezer burn and heaven forbid, turn into food waste. Has that ever happened? You don't have to tell me, but these are questions for yourself that you might want to consider. I just want to help you guys find ways that you can literally, literally save. We're going to get more into the savings thing this week, okay? We're going to talk about monthly savings, not just the dollar a day savings. Going to talk about other types of savings, okay? Okay, there you go. Hey, listen, everybody have an amazing, fantastic day. Don't forget to come back the next time. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.